folks, this is Chris with Microsoft, a.k.a. Big Daddy Nines. Welcome to another exciting episode of the Performance Series. In the last episode, we've been, we were talking quite a bit about disk performance and how to troubleshoot that. So I think we've got that one pretty well beat down. So in this video, we're going to move on to the next topic, which is going to be memory. Now, memory is a big subject, and it's going to take more than one episode to cover this. And there's a lot of different ways to talk about memory, because there's real memory, and then there's fake memory. And when we talk about real memory, we're talking about memory you can buy at a store. And when we talk about fake memory, we're actually talking about two different types of things. Uh, there are the pieces of fake memory that you might think of as uh, a, a working space for uh, a process to do stuff and reserve memory and things like that. And that's called the virtual address space. It's also an area where the kernel can do stuff. And we we look at those as virtual bytes or virtual address space. And you'll notice in here of all the little categories we have, uh, there's no virtual stuff in here, and there's no kernel stuff at all, really. This is just all user mode type things. Uh, and we'll be covering all of the virtual fake memory stuff in another episode. What we're going to be talking about today is real memory and page file and the combination of the two and how we can go about determining when we're out of memory. What does that mean? Are we out of RAM? Are we out of RAM and page file? Um, and if we are, how do we go about you know, a finding out that we're out, out of that or that we ran out last night maybe and we're looking at some counters now? Uh, and then B, who took it? <laughs> who took my memory? Right? And what kind of memory did they take? So that's, that's the point of today's episode, so we'll kind of dive in. First off, we're looking at Resource Monitor right here. If you're having trouble live, don't use Perfmon. Get in here and, and look at the problem from this perspective. Right now we're looking at a healthy box with two gigs of uh, memory. And from the views here, you can see that we have some funky sounding words. And maybe some of you are familiar. Some of you may not be familiar. Uh, for instance, what is a commit and what is a working set? and what are shareable bytes and what are private bytes. Uh, so these turn into really important counters and strangely the counters do deviate in terminology as to how we'll look at them but they don't deviate really much in purpose. And obviously you've seen the pretty little graph down here at the bottom. What does this stuff mean, right? In use, modified, standby, free. I'm not going to torture you with a whole lot of super duper deep details about this, but basically the green part is in use. This is stuff that is currently being used by Windows actively. If I fire up Notepad, for instance, it's going to need a little bit of this in use memory. And modified is in this orange area. Modified data is just stuff that it doesn't really exist anywhere other than in memory. Uh, modified bytes, or you have some people call them dirty bytes, but that's not a very good description in my opinion. And you got the standby list. So the standby list is a result of the fact that the virtual memory manager in Windows hates reading things off the hard drive because it's slow. And so once it goes and pulls something off the hard drive, it will typically not send it back. So if I opened Notepad and then I closed Notepad, Notepad would not be in here in the active running programs, and I wouldn't be able to find it. I see how it's grayed out. It's not really here anymore. If I looked in Task Manager, you wouldn't see it under details at all. There is no Notepad running right now. The Notepad is still in memory because unless I start running low on memory, the Virtual Memory Manager doesn't have any reason to go and start actually clearing out. And right now we've got tons of available RAM. You can see that right here when we zoom into available memory. This is an important piece because the available memory is the actual amount of memory that's available, not free. From a quick perspective, free, when you look at it, makes it look like, hey, that's how much free memory we have. No, you actually have way more than the free amount available. Why is that different? The reason that the available is a combination of standby and free is because this is, in fact, memory available to Windows. If, if Windows needs to fire up some big hefty program, when you open up that program, if there's not enough in free memory, it'll just sacrifice some of the stuff in the standby list. And again, the standby list is just full of stuff that either Windows thinks you're going to open or stuff you have opened and closed. Uh, and it's gone ahead and prefetched that uh, and put it into RAM so things 
feel like they load faster, so it doesn't have to go read stuff off the hard drive. It's both basically a cache, and that is uh, not actively running programs in most cases. So anyway, that's your standby list and, and your free memory, and that's what this little graph down here uh, it signifies. But what what you need to pick up from this whole thing is available megabytes is this right here, 1125. That's what that's what we're standing at right now on this virtual machine as far as free memory. As far as uh, trying to figure out from a performance perspective what it was that maybe ran us out of memory well remember that step one is really trying to figure out what we uh, ran out of right so or what bottlenecked us because you're typically looking at a performance counter from perfmon after the fact you're not going to use as we discussed in previous episodes the performance manager gr monitor grid here live you would use other tools for that task manager for instance uh, to go and figure out your primary indicators of a memory bottleneck there are a couple of really good counters that we're going to start with and we're going to do another one of these uh, performance counters manually created and we'll take a look at the memory object so we'll come in here to the M's and under memory, once again, there are no instances because there's just one memory. So there's a bunch of counters down here, and only a few of them are what we're going to really need be uh, using in, in this episode because they're the most important ones. So available megabytes right here that I've got uh, commented out, or uh, uh, highlighted rather, is the amount of RAM that's left. I, I get so frustrated sometimes because I, I read all the time in blogs and, and, and even performance books that have been written where somebody says the best way to tell if you're running out of RAM is pages per second and that is ridiculous why would I look at pages per second on you know my, my page file <laughs> or just paging in general hard page faults and try to determine if I'm out of memory based on that when I have a counter right here it tells me exactly how much memory I've got this right here available bytes is exactly the same as looking at resource monitor at the available RAM here right and if I was looking on the graph over here used physical memory that's the measure of just RAM okay so that is just RAM there are a couple of other important counters we'll go ahead and dump him in so we can talk about them percent of committed bytes in use that's RAM and page file because obviously if you have stuff that is in memory and then later gets uh, uh, paged out if you have a uh, measure that can tell you how many committed bytes you have altogether that will cover both the page file usage the committed bytes of all the processes in other words uh, so that'll cover both the RAM and the uh, page file because when a process is committing memory that doesn't necessarily mean that that memory is always still in RAM if it's been paged out if the uh, virtual memory manager has cleared some space out uh, we'll we'll see that in the process uh, performance counter that we'll be talking about later but before I get too deep into the weeds here trying to just keep it simple this is quite simply a counter that measures the total amount of RAM and the total amount of uh, of uh, a page file and how much is currently being used in a percentage counter right so we know 100 percent means we've used it all up right 10 percent means that we have 10 percent of our ram and page file another couple of important counters that are exactly related to that is the commit limits and commit byte committed com that commit limit and committed bytes these are actually the same thing as the commit percent of committed bytes in use it's just these are actually the number counters so one's a measure of the percent of total whereas commit limit is the max and committed bytes is where we're at right now so I'm gonna go ahead and chunk those three in there and I'll explain right now the reason that I like to have the commit limit even though I already have that pretty little percentage counter that'll tell me everything I like to know if the page file is expanding if the commit limit changes typically it goes up that means you know if I had four gigs of RAM and I have a two gig page file my commit limit is two gigs or is six gigs sorry I can't seem to do math four plus two equals not uh, two it's uh, six so uh, commit limit would be sitting at six gigabytes right and if I had you know three gigs currently being used the committed bytes in use counter the percentage counter right here this would show at 50% obviously right 
But what happens if I start running out of the, uh, the you know, the commit charge gets near 100%? Well, if the system's configured to do so, it might actually give me a bigger page file, right? So that would cause the commit limit to go up, and it'll cause the percentage counter to kind of fluctuate. We're going to demo that here in a little bit, so I can show you what that actually looks like live, and we'll also look at it while we're doing doing this. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll have the performance scanning running as at the same time. All right, so available megabytes we talked about, percent of committed bytes in use, committed li uh, limit, committed bytes, those are really your key performance indicators for whether or not you've run out of memory or not. And I mean the real memory stuff. I'm not talking about the fake virtual address space stuff. We're going to get to that a little bit later. Uh, you could go ahead and get your pages per second. Uh, and dump that in here, but as I mentioned before, it's not super duper important to this discussion because, you know, it's it's really not a good measure of whether or not you're running out of, uh, of memory or not. Right. So another thing that is kind of you know, interesting, you know, I'll go ahead and throw it in there just, just because people like to see it. And we'll go up here to the page file object. Oops. B A G E M N O. I apologize. I know that I'm sitting here in every episode looking for <laughs> very obvious counters. Okay, so page file.sys that's sitting on C drive, percent of usage, that'll tell us where we're at as far as uh, the percentage uses. This is not a good primary indicator of performance. What, uh, what that'll just tell you is whether or not you are indeed using your page file. People are always saying, well, are we, are we actually putting things in the page file or not? Well, if you have this counter running, you can go back and see if there are, in fact, things that are going in there. And in most cases, people will be shocked to know how little the page file actually gets used. And we need to stop and talk about this little guy right here. Page file is not an extension of RAM. And I know a lot of people already know this, but there you'd be shocked at how many people do not realize that if you have four gigs of RAM and you make a two gig page file, people think you now have six total gigs of, of memory that is usable. Like somehow you get to the end of the four gigs and we have just this continuing address space beyond that, uh, that that just keeps on running as overflow. That's not how it works. Okay, there's a little guy running in memory in the uh, kernel of the OS called the Virtual Memory Manager, and what he's doing is when he starts seeing you run out of physical RAM, he will start taking the least recently accessed pages in memory and uh, start to trim that working set of the process out of RAM. Some of that stuff will probably not make it into the page file. Some of it would. So to give you an example, if I fire up Notepad, write myself a little note, I put uh, maybe you know, some text in there like, uh, hey, pick up milk on the way home, right? Because for some reason I'm not using OneNote, I'm using Notepad. And then I minimize it, and then four days goes by, and I haven't touched Notepad since. It's just been minimized sitting on my desk. And on day three, a virus scanner kicks off and consumes all of the physical RAM to do a quick scan, and the virtual memory manager needed space. It's very possible that the... Uh, uh, notepad itself, the binaries, the executables, the uh, you know the DLL files, handles, hooks, everything that Notepad uses to do its thing, isn't actually in physical memory anymore. It's very possible that that actually has no has been trimmed out of the working set. That doesn't go in the page file because it already exists on the hard drive. Notepad.exe is on the hard drive. There is no reason to go and put another copy of Notepad.exe into a page file. It just becomes kind of a mapped instance. It says, hey, these addresses used to live here, but they're not here anymore. Go find it there. And that's what a hard page fault is. Hard page fault is going and getting something off the disk, maybe because it's the first time you've opened it. And yes, that will indeed call, cause pages per second to fly. Um, or it's, hey, this used to be in RAM, it's not here anymore, I got a hard page fault, I have to go and resolve that fault by going to the drive, the hard disk, and picking these bits back up and paging them up into RAM so that I can execute it, because the processors on your system will never actually execute code off the hard drive or the page file. Now, where did the uh, go get milk on the way home note that I wrote? That's this piece right here. That's at least one of the things, oops, it disappeared, the modified data that we saw before that was in the um, uh, orange, that that stuff is uh, not in the hard drive, and if Notepad had been minimized for days and we were running out of RAM and the virtual memory ma manager needed space, he would take go get milk and page it into the page file. That's the sort of thing that goes in the page file. 
And then strangely, if you are now sitting with a lot of available memory, what would probably happen in a lot of cases is the virtual memory manager might come back later and go ahead and forwardly resolve that uh, that uh, hard page fault for you and pull it back up into RAM because he he sees that he's got some free memory and it's something you might run again because it's sitting on your desktop and minimized and pull it back up. Bit of a, a, a stretch there into this discussion into the feeds and the speeds of how all this stuff works but it's important to understand that the uh, the stuff that is on the page in the page file isn't going to be anything that already exists in um, you know in the hard drive and it's not going to make extra copies of stuff right it's going to be modified data that doesn't exist anywhere else and so anyway I digress so there's another thing here that you might be worried about you know like okay that's great Chris you've got me my key indicators available megabytes percent of committed bytes in use if those are running low and my server was slow I saw these I know RAM or RAM and page file I had a memory contention what do I do now okay so that's always step two right well now we're going to go figure out who goes and steals our stuff when we ran out of things okay so we go to processes right process analysis of memory for just going and getting you know who took my memory is obviously going to be in the process there it is the process object and like before we drop it down and we go and look for our stuff so there are two counters here that can measure what it is that took my memory up depending on what you ran out of if you ran out of available bytes then the counter you use is the working set counter if committed bytes is what you ran out of or started running low on then the counter private bytes is what you need right so we would do all instances add that in now we've got private bytes remember the counter path the instances everyone and the counters that we're throwing in here are private bytes and working set right? so those are two measurements that simply tell you whether or not uh, this was the process who went and sucked up all your all your memory and those are the counters we're going to get. All right, so we're going to go ahead and toss in five second sample intervals because we're going to be playing with this thing pretty quickly. Go ahead, next, next, finish, and start that thing up. And let's take a look at some of the things that we can do. I'm going to be using a little program called Test Limit, and I'm going to have our uh, resource monitor running in the background, and we're going to talk about a couple of these different conditions and what they will look like. Test Limit. Um, You'll notice there's when you pull down test limit, there's both a 32-bit and a 64-bit. We're just going to play with a 32-bit one. And uh, if I throw a question mark out here, it'll show you some of the uh, things you can do. The ones that are the most important here for our test, first and foremost, is the uh, seconds elapsed dash E. Because if you just run this thing raw, it'll suck up all your memory so fast you won't even be able to see it coming. Uh, your box will be locked up and you'll have to reboot it and you, uh, if, you, if you ever want to do this just for practicing that's that's not the one uh, to do so the uh, the other piece uh, two pieces to test our our stuff here is virtual lock so the virtual lock means I'm going to start using RAM and locking my pages in RAM processes can do this they can they can do this virtual lock and they can cause the operating system not to be able to page them out and if they can't be paged out and they're leaking then the only thing you're going to run out of is RAM not RAM and page file so we're gonna do a test of that and we're also going to uh, be leaking memory with the dash M oops alright so those will be the two things we do uh, now, which one to do first? Probably the more common, and that's just going to be leaking memory. So we'll do a test limit, and we're going to do a dash M, and let's just do 10 megabytes at a time so we can have plenty of time to catch this and study it and look what it does to the OS as it goes. And then we're going to do the, uh, the dash E, and we'll just tell it to every one second come through here. So this is going to spawn a process, and it's leaking private bytes at 10 megabytes at a time. Your, uh, your private bytes counter that we threw in is the best memory leaking counter you have for a process unless your system only ran out of RAM and not RAM and page file 
So you'll see this be your most uh, used counter that you're using. Where in the heck is that? There it is. Test limit. So I'm going to go ahead and check that box. That throws him up at the top so he doesn't go away. All right, so let's look and see what, what's uh, going on with the system right now. You can see the commit charge is already starting to kind of raise up a little bit, and uh, we, can, we can bump that up to a slightly higher a bit if, if we need to because it's not obviously leaking very fast here and we can see that the committed bytes are going up and I can already tell I, I used the wrong switch <laughs> sorry all he's doing is committing memory right now he's not actually writing it so let's let's stop and talk about that for a second so what he's doing is com asking the operating system to commit memory but he's not actually touching anything and the operating system is really, really smart. Anytime a process starts looking for memory, either as a reservation or a commit, and we'll talk about in the next episode when we get into fake memory, and maybe like two episodes from now, depending on how long this takes. Um, when you start talking about fake memory, you can reserve memory, and then you can also do something else called commit the memory, which means that is going to be taking the commit charge at least from a performance perspective of Windows, and what it'll do is it'll say, as long as I got this stuff to give, I will give it to you, but it's not actually taking anything in the working set, and it's not taking anything from a private bytes perspective. Used physical memory is not going up. I'm kind of glad I made this mistake so that we can make this distinction now while we're taking a look at it. The only thing we're running out is the committed bytes, right? And those are bytes that the OS says, yes, I can give you this memory. Yes, I can give you this memory. And it'll continue to allow that process until the OS has nothing to give. So if you've ever been in a condition where the system runs out of committed memory, uh, and starts throwing in memory errors, but you had plenty of uh, physical memory available, this is, this is where that can go. Uh, so this thing is continuing to do its, uh, its leak here. You can see it's still kind of getting closer and closer to the top. The, uh, the, the current commit charge is, is continuing to go up a little bit. And as it continues to leak, we'll, we'll see this commit limit or this committed by it's getting up close to the total amount that the box has. Because remember that you know, the, you know, the commit charge in Windows is a uh, little bit uh, more than, I think, it's, I think it was 2 gigs initially. So there, there's exactly what I was looking for. Now I'm going to go and I'm going to stop this counter and we're going to talk about what just happened. Okay, so what you see here is all of a sudden he got almost to the top and then suddenly this dropped down. So what happened just then is I guarantee if we look at the commit limit, what's going to happen in our perf counters, we'll see that it went up. Why did it go up? It went up because the page file just got bigger. This thing was trying to honor commit requests, but it wasn't actually touching RAM. So this is important distinction that we have to uh, understand here is that you can have reserved memory, totally different discussion. Reserved memory won't normally affect the operating system and you won't even really see it happening in these counters. It's a different set of counters that we'll pull for those. That can cause a process to crash, but not the OS. Uh, then we have committed bytes, but not actually touching any memory. And the operating system will refuse to actually put things in memory if you don't have anything really to put. All he's doing is saying, hey, I need 300 megs of RAM. Oh, here you go. Here's 300 megs of RAM, but he doesn't really touch physical memory for that. It just fakes the program out and makes him think he's getting that. More on that later. Uh, then he can turn around and commit it. That actually does have an impact to the system. So what I forgot to do was instead of just using the leak memory, we need to leak and touch memory, this dash D right here. So we're going to leak, leak the memory this time, but we're actually going to put dirty data in it. We're going to actually have touchable data. So now we're getting this uh, process going up. We're going to go find our test limit again because obviously it's a new version of test limit. So here he is. So we'll go ahead and throw him up at the top. So here we go. So now you can see we are in fact having an impact on the system. You can see that we're going up here. Free megabytes is over. Standby list is getting consumed. And you'll notice that this graph is starting to move over towards the side a little bit as he's taking more. But this time we're actually taking private bytes and we're taking a uh, working set and we're taking committed bytes all at the same time. And as it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, we're going to start seeing that we're used physical memory is going up and the commit charge is going up. And this is important to recognize visually now in your pretty little resource monitor. And we can even look at task manager as well performance and see memory is going up and up and up committed bytes are going up and up and up down uh, down here at the description on the bottom right 
and we can see that uh, we've got so much in use and the available is going down and down and down so depending on what tool you're using these are the two you're probably the most familiar with the one we're going to be talking about what it looks like obviously later is going to be what it looks like the same way in perfmon so again let's talk about what the what the process test limit is actually doing right now he is going out he is reserving memory and as he is reserving that memory he is then committing and writing that memory, meaning that the virtual memory manager is in fact having to take real RAM and back the data that is being written. We're running very quickly low on resources. The used physical memory, if you can see on the top graph up here, is uh, almost to 100%. And I apologize if I've been pointing at things with my mouse. I realize that the mouse is still not showing up correctly in the in the uh, capture window here. Uh, that's That's just because it's a VM and I need to figure out some how or some way to put a mouse pointer, which I'm sure will be just as annoying, but hey, anyway. Okay, so uh, used physical memory is kind of topped out over 90% at this point in time. There's a uh, very small amount of memory that is still available, and you'll see the commit charge on this is continuing to increase, and you'll see that we're still about equal on the, uh, on the amount of committed bytes by this process and the working set and private bytes, okay, just as I was saying that, have now uh, diverged. So this is the part I was getting at. As you see this, this is starting to thrash. Over here on the little graph where it goes from green to blue, note that it is starting to thrash around a bit. It goes up a little bit, it goes down a little bit, it goes up a little bit, it goes down. That means things are being paged. This virtual memory manager has gone through and paged out all these other processes as much as it possibly can. And now it's having to consume the very process that's getting there. That's why there's a divergence between the committed bytes and the working set slash private bytes that are going on here, because there is that much of that process that have already been paged out. The OS over here on the graph and commit charge, the second one down, you'll see has now taken a dip. That means we have now increased the size of the page file a bit, and we are now consuming what is left of that. As we come back over here to the process counter, we see we're now over almost two gigs of memory uh, that uh, have been consumed, whereas the working set, which is, once again, the measure of physical RAM that that process is taking up, is still at about 1.1 gigs. So we're now thrashing. You see the used physical memory is almost at maximum, and you can see that it's kind of jumping up and down there. We've taken another hop down here in commit charge, meaning we have been again had to increase the size of the page file and we are continuing over here back at the process counter to see what's going on is we're at uh, two point almost three gigabytes of uh, memory that has been taken out we can see that right here yeah right there 2.3 just surpassing that threshold and we we maintain it about 1.2 gigs of physical memory because that's all the system has to give and we're continuing to leak memory and we're leaking memory probably to the point now where if I try to run processes I'll try to right click here and just go to get anything to launch. It's going to be very sluggish. The whole system is in duress. It is uh, badly in need of resources and I've clicked twice now and I'm not getting anything off this. There we go. So if I were to like open up um, like the disk management which is fairly resource intensive uh, it's it's going to sit here and it's lagging it's having a little bit of trouble at the same time our graph you can see we're still taking some memory and the virtual memory manager immediately pages stuff back so pretty much everything that could be paged out at this point has been paged out everything on every other process that could be pulled out of memory has been uh, moved out of place so that this little guy can continue doing his thing and uh, steal as much as he can from the operating system. And now the virtual memory manager is only able to survive because he's continuing to throw chunks and huge big old chunks of, uh, of uh, memory into the page file to keep the system up and to keep it alive. This would be what would happen on any system where you have a system managed page file and the uh, system has the ability to increase the page file. If we had limited the page file on this thing, their disk management's finally starting to load, uh, if we had actually uh, limited the page file we would have run completely out of resources uh, earlier than this and so that's probably what we're gonna try out here in a little bit eventually the system will no longer be able to uh, to page stuff out because we'll run out of uh, resources to be able to do that uh, so we, we should be able to visually be able to see what uh, 
you know the page file looks like if I can get system to even come up. As you see, this the situation just keeps getting worse and worse, and this is why you want to use the counter private bytes because a whole lot of this process does not even exist in. Let me go in here. Oh, I didn't mean to go to system protection. It's okay. They all bring up the same dialog box, so it doesn't really matter. Um, so we go to advanced. We go to performance. We go to advanced. And we'll see that we have already taken the total paging size for all drives up to 3.6 uh, gigs of uh, memory. And that's because this is a, uh, you know, an automatically managed page size. And so he sees that he has 20 gigs available, so he's going to consume disk space for quite some time before we completely and totally kill this system. So he will continue in this state until he, he cannot continue uh, to commit memory. And so we'll go ahead and kill this now, and we'll let this system breathe a little bit, give the four gigs back. And you'll see we immediately see a drop in the commit charge, and physical RAM drops back off, and the hard faults and everything else that were going on have uh, kind of released. But our standby list has been completely gutted out. Free memory is available everywhere, because everything that was in the standby list got consumed. But what can now happen is you'll see prefetch is coming back and loading some programs back up for me. All of the stuff that we had running that it thought would be important to us, uh, that it had to sacrifice as it has disk cycles available and it has uh, resources available, now it's going to turn around and it's going to uh, start to reload those back in. Because it knows that I open Outlook on this box a lot, it knows I open Word a lot on this box, and so it's, uh, it's going to go ahead and start loading things like that back up for me. And so in the system settings, I keep hitting system protection, Go into advanced, and then settings, and then advance, and then change, and then we're going to turn off the automatic page file size. We're going to do a custom size. We'll say you can start with 200 megabytes, and I'll give you up to one gigabyte, and we'll go ahead and set that. We'll click OK. We're going to go ahead and say we'll restart here in a minute. Yeah, that's fine. And later, and so this was, let's see, we called that memory. This was one we'll analyze in a moment, and... Um, you know, take a look at what we do with uh, with that. And so let's just, because we're going to do a few of these, let's go ahead and practice our skills on templates, and let's make a uh, memory, M-E-M-O-R-I, template. And let's do a new data collector set, and we'll call this memory test 2. Right from a template, system performance, browse out, grab that sucker off the desktop, and then we'll have a uh, another one that we can next, next, finish. But before we do that, let's take a look at what this looked like in Perfmon. So go ahead and kill that. Oop, not green button. Go ahead and hit log files, add, go out to the this PC, C drive, Perf logs, admin, memory, Davis, data collector set one. Time range, you can see, wasn't very long because it was just the amount we had there. So let's look at all these counters and see what they did. All right, percent of committed in bytes and loot use and commit limit. Let's just start with those guys and kind of look. So you can see the difference here. I'm going to turn my highlighter on and we'll go ahead and highlight percent of committed bytes and use. We can see during this process, we went up and we got into a thrashing uh, example. This is a an absolute textbook scenario of what thrashing looks like. And uh, the other one we threw in here was the commit limit. I'm going to go ahead and scale that counter so we can get it in here. This is a very important thing to realize as well. So you'll see these are exactly lined up with each other. Right? Every time that we dropped in our percent of committed bytes, looking like the system was doing a good job recovering, what was really happening was we were increasing the size of the page file. So every one of these, you'll see that uh, we see a, a sympathetic correlative counter, and that's why I like to have my percent of committed bytes and my commit limit in here. That way I know where you know what happened to this box, right? So what happened? We had a process that went through and sucked up a bunch of our resources, and the system had to adjust for that as as we went along. So let's uh, let's dump those out and take a look at some other interesting things here. So the uh, available megabytes, we'll see 
scale that one too. You can see that we were here and we went down to there and then towards the end when we stopped the process we went back up. So in this case we ran out of RAM and we ran out of page file. So let's go back in and also, oops, what am I doing? Let's go here and look at that pages per second that everybody thinks is uh, a great counter. You'll see that we are in fact seeing some paging going on. Let's, uh, let's scale that in so we can fit it on the graph. So you can see the further we went, the more we were having to page we were resolving uh, things that were being requested via uh, hard page fault. So soft page faults aren't measured with this counter, but this means we were looking for things. Uh, they weren't available, so we had to go and resolve them from disk. So pages per second, you betcha. It is a good indicator that you are out of memory, but it is not the indicator you want to use. <laughs> In fact, it's, uh, it's mostly there because it's kind of interesting to look at. I don't know why I keep clicking that. Okay, so let's uh, let's take a look here. Uh, pages, committed bytes. Okay, so just to show you the uh, the difference in these, I think it's very important we put that both on here. So we've got the commit limit and committed bytes. Let's scale those and put them in here, and you'll see that this these two counters once again make the percent of committed bytes in use. So it should not be too terribly surprising to you that the two of them kind of working together gave you a very exacting picture of what was in the counter, but sometimes these are a bit more useful. You can see the committed bytes continue to go up, whereas the percentage looked like it was kind of uh, waffling there, and that's because this kept having to increase. So committed bytes, you can see, is a very distinctive leak. There, this is a textbook 100% charted leak right here. So. Let's go ahead and dump those out and let's go look at the uh, paging file because I said that that was kind of an interesting t thing to look at as far as usage goes. You can see that we weren't really using very much in the page file, but towards the end of this, we were. And in fact, if we then go in and dump our percent of committed bytes in use, you're going to see a pretty interesting little pattern there, right? Yeah, that's fairly obvious, right? So at this point, we know for sure we've run out of RAM and page file. And now we need to know who done it. Right, so we, we, we talked about something that ran completely out of RAM. That was working set, but we ran out of RAM and page file. So we need to start with the private bytes of all the instances, and we need to dump them in here, go get total, as we talked about in previous lessons, delete it. At this point, we would not scale these counters, even though there's a bunch of them glued to the top. Remember when they are the same counter? Never scale them, otherwise you'll wind up with a whole lot of counters that are bigger than smaller counters, uh, even though you don't want your bigger, your little counters to be bigger than your big counters. All scaling does is tell this thing to make it fit on the graph. So we're going to instead make the graph fit the counters. So always keep those two separated in your mind. So we go ahead and hit that. Okay, we're still not all the way on. We hit that. We're still not all the way on. We hit that. Still not. We, still, we got them all now. All right, so it looks like uh, I'd say 40,000 was the top. So instead of 100,000, let's replace that with 40,000. Click OK. And we've got a very good uh, 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 indication of what's going on. We might even maybe bump that by another 5. And there we've got it. So... We've got the highlighter on. We can just come in here and click and find the process that, uh, that caused the problem. And we can immediately see that test limit was the offending process that sucked up all of the private bytes and caused a memory leak on this server and uh, created this, this issue for us. So you'll notice that private bytes actually were leaking in that first instance. Because private bytes, this is very important, and this is what I'm going to leave us with before we move on to part two of this, uh, uh, or I should say series, is actually going to be uh, the next episode. Private bytes measures not just the private bytes that you see here in our resource monitor, right? We see private. It also measures committed bytes. So it's important to know that this is a great counter to, to pick up what might have run your server aground, right? So I will take all of the other counters except for this one, and I'll go ahead and dump them out because we know he's the bad guy, and I'll show you what the other counter looked like because it becomes very interesting here in a little bit. So we go get test limit, test limit, test limit, not task manager, test limit, dump it in there, and you'll see that he did not. So the first test 
this is this is really important guys I hope you hope you're catching this the first let me let me even go so far as to take this counter and take the red and make it big and bold and then we'll highlight the other counter so the first test was in red remember we 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 ran up uh, using test limit we ran up committed bytes but never touched any memory we never touched any RAM which is why the red line doesn't go anywhere because you know committing memory does not actually suck RAM off a box and in this case we can see that it did now why you might be asking yourself why does it kind of taper off well let me, let me highlight that other guy so when I switch between these two we, we get a good nice blue and a thick line and say okay alright so why did that happen well, the reason is because he was only able to take this much RAM, right? So if we if we look at that limit right about there, that's as much RAM as the box had to give. And so that was as much as he was able to give out at any given time. So that's why the committed bytes in, a, in, a, in an instance where you have not run out of uh, just RAM, but run out of RAM and page file, this is a terrific counter to have because you can see this thing is leaking and it makes it a very obvious uh, find for which one was the bad guy. Uh, so in the next episode what we're going to do is we're going to talk about processes that are just RAM and in uh, episodes after that we'll be talking about virtual address space and how that's important to you both from a perspective of memory and um, troubleshooting from a kernel and user mode perspective. So those will be the next parts in this series where we're continuing to talk about RAM. And so for now, anyway, guys, it's been Chris with Microsoft. And as always, I thank you for watching. If you did find anything about this useful or interesting, please take a second and give it a quick like. That helps other people to find this video. Feel free also to subscribe to my channel. That helps you, if you actually found this interesting, uh, to be notified when there are any additional videos that I upload in the future. I have a blog. It's at 9z.com, and it's uh, super easy to remember that address. It's just the last number followed by the last letter.com. Uh, my blog's also got links to my Facebook, my LinkedIn, my Twitter, and my TechNet blog. So anyway, again, as always, thanks a ton for listening, everybody, and I will see you in the next episode.